our player is going to spawn in there. Um, there's going to be a force field a of barrier blocks. There will be a bubble, a dome, right, in this area mm -hmm. that the, to which the player has access. And there will be stuff here like where they can, um, as they accumulate loot, there's going to be a Navajo Hogan, which is a spherical shaped building. Um, the top part of the dome will look like a traditional Hogan, and when you go underground, it'll be storage for loot that you assemble. On top of the tallest mountain, which since my render distance is at 8, I'm not sure where that is, that's going to be the giant pot that they have to repair. But here's the trick. They can't go over here because there's barrier blocks in the way. Mm -hmm. All right, all the beautiful stuff they can't access. Oh, is that, that's the pot that uh, Adrian Brightmore has been working on. Yeah, well, before. I'm going to have a series <laughs> of pots. Every uh, quest you go on will take you to a pot or a basket. Mm -hmm. um, and there you're going to learn different aspects of uh, Native American history and culture. Um, mm -hmm. uh, some of it going as recent as, well, a few months ago. I think this is a tall mountain, yes. So it may not be a dome, it may have to be a rectangle because up here is where the pot goes. I want my player to be able to come up here and look down this hill and this is all going to be devastated terrain. There's going to be mm -hmm coal mines and uranium mining and um, oil rigs and cheap little um, travel trailers and mobile homes that the people are living in and environmental degradation and in here the player can free roam but it's a horrible place to be um, mm -hmm. there's going to be border towns because a lot of the people were moved off of their uh, traditional homelands and forced into these border towns where you have to pay for everything and these people don't have an economy based on money so they were like astounded you have to pay for water um, so they can come over here to the border towns the players can come to the border towns and they will interact with NPCs who will um, there will be teleport buttons to teleport them to the pretty part of the map um, to little aspects of the pretty part of the map where they have to solve puzzles and problems and so on and then mm -hmm. they bring um, it's kind of like a CTM there will be pieces of the pottery up that's up here on the hill that they have to replace the missing pieces um, that's why I wanted the pot lined that's why Adrian was working on a lined pot so that it will have um, water dripping particles off of the cracked part um, so it looks like it's leaking but there's not actually water flowing out of it so mm -hmm. the player has to replace the pieces of the CTM to build the giant pot and then they come back over here and there's also going to be small item quest things and there will be little hopper chests and they drop the various things in to prove that they finished that part of the map uh, of the uh, quest and they will be issued a piece of a map, and it's going to be like a picture puzzle. I think you use Pixlr, I don't remember, where you can take real images and you can break them up into Minecraft maps. Um, and you can make them as many map sizes as you want, but I figure maybe about six of them or so on. And then the player can reproduce a picture. Now when they get to a, the right point in the map, and they've made a commitment to learning about the history of the area and um, they've, you know, they've endured some of the stuff and they realize it's going to take a commitment to restore not only the pot but the people and the environment and stuff out here. When they get to that point and they've had the realization that this is important and necessary work and um, that they need to tell others too and that's how, you know, it'll build momentum and things will change, mm -hmm. then the barriers here will lift and they can roam free in in the beautiful part of the world. The beautiful part of the world is, of course, what things look like before all the environmental degradation and the enforced poverty and all that. So then they can come over here and free roam and see the places they visited. There's a village nearby. Um, there's also uh, two or maybe three desert temples that are naturally spawning. I've got my dungeons. I hope Trust in Lies did this. To set my dungeons to high because the player is going to um, while it is a kind of a adventure slash CTM slash it's different sparks than most maps I know about mm -hmm. um, 
the player is going to be able to mine for resources and you know they're they're expected to be self-sufficient and um i will provide lots of loot there will be you know little um chests and stuff so there will be plenty of stuff to find um the um temples alone have about 13 14 diamonds in them combined and a whole bunch of iron blocks i mean iron ore and uh gold so and saddles and look at the horses you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a horse <laughs> um there's yeah. also donkeys nearby and i'm going to hint to the player that it might be smart to breed some mules because mules can carry lots of loot back you know mm -hmm. so um your mission should you should you decide to accept it i don't know where the command blocks need to be i don't know if it's spatially necessary for them to be in proximity with the area where the player is going to um, encounter the poison is that important uh, no the best place for the command blocks is underneath where you spawn so that that pillar where I was doing good. earlier when I logged in very good um, and, um, you don't have to put it in a bedrock box right now because I'm sure they're going to be other command blocks and you know Brightmore built that pottery filter for MC edit I'm just like astounded by what people are doing Adrian Brightmore is a very smart guy when it comes to MC edit yeah, I'm like, okay, I don't even have to, like, think. There's lots of dungeons around here, so this needs to be low. Because I do want my players to find these dungeons. Oh, yeah, I see the dungeons, yeah. Yes. Oh, that's nice. And we can just put bedrock on the wall so people can't get in later. Is that good? Yep, that's I'm that's amazed fine. we didn't hit any lava there. I was expecting lava to be oh, pouring into the walls low. now. I, I have been playing on game mode 4, but I haven't been really, um getting much benefit out of it because what I've been playing is survival Minecraft on game mode 4 and um, being startled and surprised by all the little tricksy things that happen. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm in a ravine, I'm very far out, I don't know if I can ever find my way back to spawn. I mean, for me it's far out, for you it'd probably be like, you know, biggie. But I'm on this like island in a birch forest and I found a ravine and I'm setting up housekeeping in the ravine. And I was la 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 la, just having fun. And I heard some mobs around, and I wasn't too worried because there's sunlight coming in, plenty of torches, and I'm la la la. And then I heard an Enderman. And I got this cold chill. Because <laughs> I couldn't remember exactly what it was you had done to Enderman, but I think <laughs> it makes the other mobs more buff. Exactly. And I was like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? <laughs> <laughs> and is there something weird about chickens? I uh, don't think so, no. Because I got this... You know the normal tick of their feet and the normal cluck? I'm getting a slow sounding tick of feet and a lower pitched cluck. It's probably just natural game sounds, but your server has me so paranoid that I thought it was some kind of uber chicken that was going to kill everybody. That's an awesome idea. I'm going to make oh, that now. Oh, no. And I had to I'm going to make you. it so that it, it spawns around your location only. Oh, thank you, Mark. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Two things. First of all, um, the people on that server are lovely. Oh, good. And if they're not lovely, they get banned. Yay! Um, so if somebody griefs you, you tell me. I can. F I've got tools that tell me who did what. Yeah. So I can find out who it was. Um, uh -huh. And the other thing is that uh, coming soon is a module which uh, basically lets you plant crops automatically using either pigs or special boots. Oh, and I'm wow. planning to make it so that these special boots, if you wear them, it doesn't turn the grass under you to dirt. Oh. So it's like um, soft boots for walking on grass without damaging it kind of thing. I have another question to ask you for logistics and just for um, quality control on this. Um, this is down in a bedrock box way underground. Presumably the game is only detecting blocks that are visible these days, presumably. Um, I'm, uh, my concern of course is about lag. Mm -hmm. um, is that going to be an issue as I add more and more commands in, down in my basement here? With uh, c command blocks are a type of block called a tile entity. Mm -hmm. um, tile entities are like blocks, but they have extra information in them. So things like chests are tile entities because they've got contents or droppers and dispensers, things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Command blocks are tile entities because they've got text inside them. 
uh, tile entities add to the lag on a server, um, even if they're just sitting there doing nothing. Um, so you want to try and keep the um, command box down, but it's a it's a server side thing. So it depends on how good your server is. It won't affect the client. Yeah. What I'm doing here is not very laggy at all. Firstly, I'm trying to build it as efficiently as possible. Well, of so, course, because you're Sparks. Yeah, well, I just like to, especially having worked with Game Mode 4, efficiency is key because you've got all of these modules sort of building up. Now, check this out. I learned this the other day, right? You see how, how these two hoppers of the clocks are going at the same speed? Yes. If I put this command block down here, this one is now going to run slower. It's so cool. Oh. And that's um, basically this command block down here that I just placed is setting the transfer cooldown time of this hopper to oh, 40, wow. which is quite a high number. So it has to, it takes a long time for it to send the item back. Wow. So this way I can have a slower hopper clock. It's so wonderful <laughs> what people can program in this game. Mm. It just amazes me. Yeah, but this is a much less laggy way of doing this than having uh, a, a lot of other clock types to get that right. speed of pulse, if that makes sense. So yeah. I'm trying to keep it as lag-free as possible. Um, well, the more information... The more players you'll have on here, the worse it'll get. But I'm assuming you want to make it like a one-player map or well, I a couple probably, of players? I would like it to also be multiplayer because, I, you know, I've been watching Kurt J. Mack and um, Lorgon111 play through um, Wayward Wonders. And it's really funny to watch the two of them try to work through it together. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be nice to have, if teams want to play, they, I mean, or not teams, but groups want to play, it would be interesting, but um, I'm not designing it particularly for single or multiplayer at this point. I may have to when I get to the teleporting system. Yikes. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> excuse me, again, that's going to be real simple. This is the this is the big test. Stand on the stand on the sand. Okay. Oh, I'm in game mode one. Should I change my game mode? No, it's fine. So you can see on the sidebar you have a poison score of three. Ah. And I have none. If you step off it, you should get a poison score of one. Uh huh. So this the poison effect will only be applied if you're near the irradiated area, right? But it will right. be calculated regardless of where you are. So one is like the base poison. So if you're nearby. You're going to get a little bit of poison all the time. If you stood on sand, it adds two to that. Oh, wow. So I get a total of three. And I can do the same with water. So we can we can balance this however much poison you want to add for each thing. Now, so if there was water on top of this, then it would add up to uh, five, I think. Because you've got two for the water, two for the sand, and um, one for the base. So if oh. I just add the command block that does the water. Oh, I just destroyed the water. Well, that's smart. Silly that's... sparks. That's that is sand. not water. That's not water, <laughs> that's sand. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Five. Okay, I have a question for you. Does this affect all water and all sand all over the world? It does. Is there any way to make it geographically local? Yes. Okay. Uh, it, it will basically, your poison score will always be calculated by the system. Mm -hmm. um, because that's less laggy than um, checking a certain area. Uh huh. But the poison effect will only be applied if you're in a certain area. Okay. If that makes sense. Yes. So it's going to no. be it's going to say how much poison you should have, no matter where you are. But it'll only actually give you poison if you are in the certain area. If that makes sense. Yes, it does. I started watching Adam Clark's old videos, his Minecraft tutorials. And mm -hmm. the very first one is a command block for teleporting. And I'm like, this is easy. I can do command blocks. And then I started going through his uh, all of his tutorials. And I'm like, and everything is like, I can do this. I can do this, you know. And from him, I started looking at who he followed on Twitter. Plus, we were doing the temple craft thing, and that's how I met you. You know. Yeah, you were laughing at me. <laughs> yes, I well, I laugh at people a lot. I just thought it was funny that a guy named Sparks is supposed to set things on fire and can't get a fire to start. <laughs> so I had to harass you about that. Um, so and then from Adam, I met um, Adrian Brightmore and started watching him build that vanilla survival map. You can only play in survival to build um, an adventure map. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, you know what? Stop being intimidated. Go find the map makers, you know? 
And basically, I started following just about everybody that Adrian Brightmore was following. You know, mm-hmm. between him and Adam Clark, I pretty much know everybody in the game now. And um, and then out of the blue, I put up a twit, a twit, that said, um, "Somebody please help me set up a small server so that because I need World Edit to make my map." And um, Neuropsych saw me tweet that. And he said, what do you want, and blah, blah, blah. And he put me in touch with his admin, um, Trust the Centurion. And Trust started asking me questions about what I wanted. And I told him about the old Granny Gamer 1 server files. But I said, I, this is a totally different world. He said, well, give me those files, too. And I'm like, now you realize I have really bad internet, and really bad upload, and really bad, uh, really bad upload, and really bad download. And I can only have one or two players on at a time on my own computer. And he said, don't worry about it. And then he disappeared. And I'm like, and I, I know they're real busy, so I'm not going to, like, nag them. And then all of a sudden, he's like, okay, Neuro has told me to set you up on the Emerald Isle server. And I'm like, he what? <laughs> and I said, Neuro, thank you. And he said, hey, us homies got to stick together, man. And I'm like really really so you know it's like i'm covered i mean like you're here immersive minds really interested in it because my, the i, I really want to start getting some um energy about doing minecraft edu on, on in in indian country mm-hmm. it's just so i've looked everywhere sparks there's nothing about minecraft and native americans and it's a perfect fit you know, mm, absolutely. it's a great way to teach interactive technology and coding and all the stuff that Minecraft teaches. And especially out here in the Southwest, the way the art and architecture and stuff works, it's it's geometric. You know, mm. it's geometric patterns and tiles and mosaics. And and I'm like, the minute I got Minecraft, I started building Native American stuff. I mean, the minute I got it, you know. <laughs> And yeah. I've been I've been playing with it ever since, so I'm really invested in trying to get some energy going with the Native American communities and education because, oh my gosh, what this will do to stimulate kids' interest in in learning. Yeah, oh that's my that's gosh. what I find interesting about Minecraft. It's the perfect educational platform, and it's um. <laughs> it's it's also great for people who have like um, learning disabilities or challenges. Yeah. You know, um, ways to express themselves in, spatially. If a, if a concept is difficult to understand with pen and paper, you know, just as an abstract concept, you can learn geometry so much easier in Minecraft than you can on a chalkboard. Oh, I completely agree, yeah. <laughs> Lord. So, um, and, and it's not like... Native people are not primitive at all. There's a college near here, near Gallup, New Mexico, about 300 miles from me, in a town called Crown Point. Um, it's a Navajo Technical College. It was started out to be one of those schools where, well, Navajos will never do anything. We'll teach them how to be cooks and auto mechanics, right? You know? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they'll never go to university. At least this will keep them off the streets. You know, that kind of attitude, right? Um, yeah. Well, you know what's going on there now. Um, solar energy and um, sustainable environmental stuff um, all using like what do we have as resources right here right now and how can we get the most out of them and they have a real culinary school not just how to flip burgers a real culinary school so I'm like Minecraft EDU and uh, so it's not like the native people don't have the interest in technology and they Absolutely. Just, it's just like well where do we plug in and there was just recently a new grant given to Native Amer- American educators um, by the federal government and I'm like okay so the federal government has funding for projects on the res so why isn't Minecraft part of that because nobody thought of it yet except yeah. me and I'm nobody so Go if for I, it if I build this map, maybe I can like, maybe I can call some friends in Albuquerque and say, "Hey, y'all wanna come out here and see what Minecraft can do?" 
And I'm not a good representative. You know, I don't pretend that I'm Navajo or Hopi or any of that. No, I'm not even going to pretend that I'm some sort of big expert on a culture I'm not part of. But uh, Native people have been so separated from their own traditions and cultures and languages and educational systems and stuff, the way they used to do things, that a lot of kids today, some of the stuff I'm presenting in this map is going to be new information to them. And it's the history of their own areas, you know? They don't even get to speak their languages anymore. So, um, it's sort of a sampler for non-natives, and also I want to make a welcoming place where natives can come and say, Oh yeah, I've heard about Pueblo Bonito, and oh, I know about Canyon de Shea. My grandma used to live there, and you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Here I am on my soapbox, but I get really excited about this. <laughs> so who's this guy, Poison Source? This is what we will use to mark where you want things to be poisoned. Oh, goody! So, wherever you want poison, you place one of these, and we can choose how large of an area around it is affected. So, so you could go f for maybe 50 blocks in every direction in a circle, or wow, this something is like great. that. Wow, this is great! So I can take this little cootie, and I can go out into the world and find the places that I want to be poisoned, Mm -hmm. And can I bury this in the ground so they can't see it? Uh, let me quickly change this command for you. I can actually make it invisible. Cancel. So would the command block be under... How... The whole thing can be invisible? Um, it's... Okay, so... Right now, do you see how it's invisible? You just see the name? Yes. If you go into game mode 3... Okay. You can see that it is actually still there. It's just not visible. So, um, what you can basically do... Is All right. wherever you want one of these potions, poison sources, mm -hmm. um, you put down this command block with this command inside. Mm -hmm. You power it to to summon this um, poison source command uh, armor stand, mm -hmm. and then you can delete the command block. You don't need it there anymore. Oh, so once the command, once the um, special armor stand is there, then the command block is just superfluous. Exactly. So it'll be completely invisible. I'll get rid of the bit which uh, makes the name tag visible as well, so that. It's not showing up at all. So if I um, kill that one a second. How are you so smart? Practice and lots of failure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know something about those. <laughs> okay. I keep looking at that lapis and wanting to mine it. I'm just an old school. All right, so if I, if I push this button again, that is now complete. Completely invisible to me. I cannot even see that. Uh, you're still in game mode three, I think, yes. so you can still see it. But uh... and then you can break the command block, and the armor stand will just float down to the ground and work. Yep. Actually, if you want, I can stop it from floating, so you can put it up in the air a little bit. Okay. Or well, you can put it underground, wherever you want to put it, really. All right. It'll be on the surface. Okay. Do what, the uranium, try... what the uranium miners did was they extracted um, the actual uranium they wanted, but all the surrounding rock and um, dirt and sand and debris, they just basically pooped it out onto the surface and left it out there. Mm -hmm. And it's all radioactive. It has a very long half-life as well, doesn't it, uranium? Yeah, like 50,000 years, something like Well, it depends on, you know, what, what it is. But hmm. it's blowing in the wind, it's getting in the water, it's contaminating the grass, the sheep are eating the grass, the people are eating the sheep and drinking the water. Um, you go to the town of Gallup, there are whole patches in Gallup where you're not supposed to live anymore. Yeah. You know? And then there's the problem of they hired um, native people to be the uranium miners. Um, they didn't explain to the people, of course, what they were doing and how dangerous it was. Where'd the armor stand go? I killed it. Oh. Um, they didn't explain <laughs> any... Yeah, but shouldn't you make a copy of it so that I can poop it around the world? Cause... You want you want to copy the command block. Um, oh, that's all I want to copy because it'll poop out the armor stand. Yeah, if you go into game mode 1 and okay, um, on. copy that command, then we can go and put it somewhere where you want it to, to be working. So these people didn't know how dangerous the substance was? Okay, so am I doing the console command? Yeah, I'm doing the console command. So control C. 
Uh, control A, Control C. Right, Control. That's what I've been doing wrong. Control A. Yeah, because you have to highlight. I forgot. Mm -hmm. Control A, Control C. It's been a long time since I've had to do that. So now hit done. Don't touch anything. So they didn't know that these materials were dangerous. And there's one story recently I heard about a guy who um, built his entire house out of debris from the from the uranium mines. And his entire family is sick now. Like right in here. So then I place the block. Mm -hmm. Oh, will it detect red sand or just white sand? All sand. So yeah. you can see it's gone up to three. Now you stood on it. Okay. Your now poison lab. I paste in the command control V. V. I don't have to worry about previous output, right? Yeah, that's fine. You can leave that and then just click done or enter. Um, you need to power the command block first. Oh, right. You have to, to uh, like a summon the armor thingy. stand. Yeah. Okay, Do you like a button? Thingy, redstone thingy. Oh, right. You could just put a button. I never even thought yeah. of that. Well, shoot. Well, see, all the fancy YouTubers use redstone blocks because they look rich. And Oops. <sighs> Done. Okay. There you go. So now if you go into game mode 3, you should see there's a st there is not a... St okay, there isn't a stand there. Great. <laughs> there is or, what? Unbalance. Oh, you, you accidentally typed an E on the end of the command. Oh, okay. Can you fix it? Because I'm in game mode 3. Sure, I'll get rid of the E. I right, I'll push inventory. the button again for you. <laughs> okay, now I can break the command block. Wait mm -hmm. a minute, let me slow it up a little because I'm in game mode 3 and I don't want stuff. Okay, G A M E. M O D E one. Now I can break the command block, and presumably it should still work. Mhm. Mm All right. So what's my poison? Yeah, I've got three. Um. And will actually, it be a radius of something or other, or what? Uh, we can set whatever radius you would like, and yes. you can place you can place multiples of those, and they'll all act as poison sources. I think it's all the more poignant because you know. Minecraft is a whoa! Minecraft is a familiar environment and we're happy here and there's things about it we like. And to see it messed up, I mean, Minecraft is kind of like our home, right? I mean, in a virtual sense. And to see it messed up and ugly and dangerous, um, people are going to respond to that. And maybe they'll get kind of a taste, kind of, of what it would be like Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially for the younger people who've never seen it any way except messed up. Yeah. Okay, I've got a question for you. Um, you want animals to die as well, uh, if they're in the area. Do you only want them to die if the player is there, did you say? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. Um, do you want, and you want them to actually be able to die rather than just... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, that's fine. Can do you, you want make the player to be able to die, or do you want them to be like stuck on half a heart? I would like to. Well, yeah, I think half a heart's bad enough, don't you? Because yeah. if a cootie comes out from under a tree, well, then they're squash. Okay. Can you make it um, a specific animal gets sick, or no? Mm -hmm. I don't think I want to do that. No, any animal I to, within the proximity. I need, to, I need to list all of the animals separately anyway, so. Oh well, uh, if I'll it, have to have a command block for cows and one for pigs and things like that. However many you think sheep. be there. Just sheep. Just sheep. Okay. Just sheep. It's fine. Because I don't want you to have to make 50 billion command blocks for every flipping mob in the game, and um, I'll just make sure there's sheep spawn nearby. I might even put a sheep spawner nearby. Okay, so if you put down a sheep next to that armor stand, we should be able to see it get poisoned in a moment. I hope it's not a pink one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll feel really bad because, you know, pink sheep. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. People are so mean to sheep in this game. They get to all kinds of... Boy, you guys in those rabbit, exploding rabbit walls or whatever that was. <laughs> you sadistic freaks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised anybody could move around the server with all that going on. Oh, that was just a test. That wasn't actually uh, on rabbits. the server. Uh, 
we were trying to basically do hard, do complicated stuff on the server to see whether it could handle it. Well, I would not suggest flaming walls of bunnies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Although I must say it was quite impressive to look at. So it's going to be within 10 blocks, and most of those sheep are within 10 blocks, and we'll put one over here. Yep, yeah, nearly done. <laughs> okay, folks, get ready. We're going to kill those sheep for no reason whatsoever, except human mean to sheep. Especially in Oh, sheep, stay over there. You're safer. Believe me, trust me. Stay over here and make it pretty gold. If you stand um, a little bit closer to the armor stand a second, sure. just check. That. Oh, there we go. You just weren't close enough. I think we may have to increase that radius then. My poison one, though. Uh, I haven't done players yet, just sheep. I'm going to get oh, rid yeah, of the... Oh, yeah, the sheep have... I saw a sheep with bubbles. Yeah, do yeah, you want to get rid of the particles? Sheep. Or do you want to keep the particles? No, don't get rid of the particles. It's more horrifying if there's particles. <laughs> God, that's terrible! Oh, I feel so bad! I know they're not real sheep. I know they're not real sheep. Whoa. I think we have enough sheep, Spark. Oh, Lord. Is 10 oh. blocks too little, do you think? I think there's actually 5 blocks in every direction, so I'll make it 10 in every direction. No, I think 5 is bad enough. Okay. Oh, that's horrifying. And they all get hit at the same time. I could w make it a random sheep in the area. Mm, no, it has to be all the sheep because that's part of the problem. They can't eat the sheep. And they can't use the wool to make rugs. And rugs are part of how their money-based economy now, you know? As a matter of fact, the federal government went in and it was just the federal government estimated that the average Navajo family required 35 sheep to sustain their livelihood. And so if, if they, you look right now, only four sheep at a time take damage, if that makes sense. But then the next okay. split, a different four. So we could so do it that like way. waves of sheep. Yeah, so it'll just choose four random ones, I think. Yeah, that's more is, like is, real life. Yeah, that's that's the way we could do it. So it'll sort of slightly randomize it, and I can make it do two or three or four or ten. You know, that, you know why else that makes sense? Um, entities, all the mutton and um, wool on the ground. Mm -hmm. that, it would help reduce lag because you don't want two hundred sheep going off at once. How many sheep are you planning to put well, in I'm that area? Just saying, <laughs> yeah. But the less random stuff that's just floating around for five minutes, the happier, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I see how that's working. So the federal government came in and confiscated their livestock, so they didn't have their live sheep anymore. So they couldn't sustain themselves, and they had to move away to cities. And then they mm. said, well, you're not living on your land, so we're taking your land, too. Hmm. Because they had to go to cities to find jobs. It's a shame I can't... I can't think of a way of poisoning the food drops. Like it'd be cool if, if you ate it, it poisoned you. Yeah. But I'm sure I, can, I can change the mutton to spider eyes or something, but I can't really... Are you planning to use a resource pack? Yes. Although then spiders would drop poisoned mutton. <laughs> 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 yeah, but... you could do. Because unfortunately I can't think of a way of tracking the food. Yeah, to just to differentiate be... it from normal healthy mutton. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna try poisoning the player now. So I'm gonna give them longer poison effects depending on how poisoned they are, if that makes sense. So you currently have a poison score of one, which is just the natural background radiation effect, yeah? Uh -huh. Um so this should give you poison for one second every now and again if you're stood near the armor stand. Okay. You wanted to go stand near it? Uh, no, but I will. Oh, it was poison too. Let me lower that. Oh, I got hurt. Oh, and I've got green goobers. So that's like one second of poison every now and again. Oh, it's not actually... 
It's not actually poisoning you, though. Well, it was before it hit me. I've got green. My hearts are flashing green when I'm... Well, they're going from red to green, but mm -hmm. I'm not getting that hit sound anymore. See, we could do it so that the background radiation just changes your heart color occasionally without actually damaging you, unless you... I think maybe it should damage you a little bit, I really it? like the hit thing, though, you know? Okay, uh, really what happens now? Okay, I don't know. Yep, like that. Yep. It's taking off half a heart, I think. I think we're on um, peaceful mode here because it's oh, right. generating right away. Okay, hold on. Uh, Should I change the difficulty to normal yeah. or something? Okay, we're now on normal difficulty. Oh, you, are, you so. type faster than me. I was doing it. I swear I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just keyboard, man. All right. Yeah, now I'm taking damage. My heart so, flash green, and then I'm losing. It looks like about a quarter of a heart, no, something like that. Right, I'm gonna make it so that if you are stood on sand, um, I'm gonna walk. Wait a minute, I've got three poison, but let me walk away for a second. And I'll come back. Maybe I should let myself regen here. I'll eat, <laughs> I'll eat some of this toxic mutton. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, on the sand block, yeah, I've got three. Um, oh, wow. But I'm, I haven't upped it yet, so this is now going to give you poison for four seconds instead of two. So you'll still be poisoned when you walk away, but you will regen. Uh, yes. Great. You'll, you'll only be poisoned for four seconds. So right now, stood on the gr on this, I'm getting more damage. I could also make it poison you faster instead of just longer. Uh, we need to give people a chance to get away though, because at first they won't know what's going on, and they'll just be like, "What?" I could make I could make the water poison them faster. Yes. Yes. Okay, let me build a thingy to hold the water so we don't do what we did the last time. Okay. You mean... Except I'm in survival, duh. <laughs> uh... I do that all the time. Well, logic puzzles. Who does logic puzzles at 6 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> lots of Minecrafters. Lots and yes. lots of Minecrafters. Okay. okay, give it give it a shot. You should be getting just yes, poison I am getting one right now. now. And if you get stand in there, you should get poison two, which will do more damage if you get into the water, theoretically. I've got poison five. Holy guacamole! Poison five? Yes. I it's changed the wrong number. It's not out of me. It's gonna kill me. Let me go eat some mutton. I'll be right back. Well, remember because sand was two, and then if you were sand and water, it was something else, something like that. I don't know what I'm saying. Well, I'm not getting in there with you. I don't want boy cooties. <laughs> I will sit over here and let my mutton kick. <laughs> okay, poison one, you get slow ticks of poison. <laughs> now I've got six. Holy. And then no, we, that's, we, that's poison too. Are you? Where are you seeing six? I'm seeing Granny Gamer with a red six next to my name. No, I'm seeing you with this red six. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's uh, yeah. That's fine. That's what I expected. You're actually getting the the effect you're getting is poison too. All right. So if I'm just near it, I get poison one. If I ooh, now I'm getting stuff. Did you hit me? Or was that no. stuff? Okay. Yeah, it's Granny Gamer One, Poison Six. Look at me go. I can't eat fast enough to keep up with it. That's good. Okay. So technically that's water and sand. I can make that give more poison than just water. Right. If you wanted. Um so you stood on sand and in water. Yeah, it should be slightly more poison with water and sand than just with sand. Okay. And then if you're in proximity to the armor stand, you'll get a little poison as well. Is that how it's working? Exactly, yeah. Cool. 
Oh, I'm sure going through some pork chops. I mean muttons. Okay, so that should now should now be more poisonous. If I just put um, water without sand here, you should be able to see a difference between them. Okay. That's weird. When I place water, it plays a little particle effect. That must be a bucket. It's weird. I'm at four. Holy smokes. Mm hmm So that's just the water is four. Okay. I'm... So that's poison two for two seconds. And then this one here is six, which is poison two for four seconds. So it's a lot, <laughs> lot more potent. Whoa. <laughs> All the smacking sounds. It's like a cartoon. Well, it kind of is a cartoon, isn't it? Yeah, I'm getting out of here. Yeah, that's scary. That'll scare them. And then just sand is poison one for two seconds, cool. I think. <laughs> now this can't kill kids. you. You'll you'll be left on half a heart, but it won't actually kill you. Yeah, but like I want. said, if there are mobs around, you're you know yeah. in deep doo doo. So, or if you fall, I could probably be really rude and make a dune of sand that you have to climb, and hide one of these little boogers in it and as you're trying to climb the block you're getting sicker and sicker and sicker hmm. uh. so um i guess it's done well this is Unless awesome there's more you want me to add um only if you want to put a million dollars in my bank account um <laughs> t-a-m-e-m-o-d-e stop it me three I'll, shrink, I'll shrink this clock down to size uh, I have labeled most of the command blocks so you can have a look and see what they do. Great. I'm so glad. I'll label the remaining ones. Because it'll be a lot more useful if I... Yes, thank you. This is great. You're very thoughtful. So this one that's way underground, is it going to still impact the sheep above it? It will only impact things within 10 blocks of it. Okay. Up, down, sideways. It doesn't matter. Yeah, just okay, in a, cool. like a circular, um, spherical, like a, like a bubble, exactly. Okay. I think the sheep is going to be enough because that's the main, um, food source, or it was, and, um, although some people raise cattle, but I'm not even going to deal with cattle in this. I might, I think I'm probably, if I can get some help retexturing it, I would like to retexture cows so that they are elk, because to this day, people go elk hunting and you haven't eaten food until you've eaten a stew made out of some nice fresh elk meat oh my gosh it's really good <laughs> they have their own hunting season and they have their own permits from the federal government to hunt and they help keep the herds balanced in the environment so there's not too many elk eating too many baby plants and you know because we've killed off most of the natural predators out here. We're reintroducing gray wolves in the area, but uh, not enough. And there's a lot of anger and resentment from farmers that wolves are being reintroduced. So wolves tend to mysteriously get shot by somebody. And coyotes just don't fill the same niche that wolves do. Coyotes are mostly scavengers. They're kind of cowardly. They don't really want to be predators. So they won't take down a large animal, they'll just go for small stuff and roadkill and, you know. This is a great contraption, thank you. You're welcome. I'm just adding some buttons um, so you can show and hide the sidebar as well. So I can do that and it'll... Oh, it didn't work. <laughs> is that because it's big, uh, it's big bucket? Uh, no. I'm just terrible at typing. You're burping green swirlies. I, I can hide the swirlies unless you want them there. No, no, I want them there. It's like, what okay. happened? Why Why is this happening, you know? <laughs> because the first impulse the player is going to have is, I've been attacked by a skeleton, and then they're going to see there's no skeleton, and they're going to realize they didn't hear an arrow. And then the next thing is going to be invisible spider, because they'll see they're poisoned, and there's no spiders. And so why are they poisoned? Okay, there you go. So you can um, Yay. you can push those buttons if you want to sh check what your poison level is or anything like that. Okay. Excellent. So the I could have the players play the map 
and not have not be able to see the poison scoreboard on the side. Yeah, yeah, that okay. was just uh, basically for testing. Cool. There's a creeper in here. We're not on peaceful. D i f f i p u l t y p e a c e f u l. We're not dealing with you right now, bro. <laughs> thank um, you, Sparks. Thank you. You're thank more you, than thank welcome. You. Uh, yeah, if you've got any other questions, feel free to buzz me. Thank you. I shall. But I'll try to keep it to a minimum. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank Ciao. you. Bye. Like, do like, share, comment.